Hey, Wonder Hussy here. I'm in beautiful Zion National Park in Utah. This is one of the most beautiful national parks I've ever been to. It's pretty crowded, but you can see why. I mean, this scenery is amazing. And speaking of amazing, there's some amazing hikes you can do here. But there's only one hike I'm interested in doing, and that's the Angel's Landing Trail. They call it strenuous. And they say that something like five people, I think, have died falling on this trail since 2004. It's really steep. They don't recommend it for anyone who has a fear of heights. And there's a section where you have to hang onto these cables while you're walking along a cliff. So it's supposed to be pretty hardcore. And you know me, only the hardest of hardcore will do. Well, I'm here at the base of the trail. You can see people behind me starting to ascend up the face. I'm guessing we're gonna end up somewhere way at the top. <laughs> Should be interesting. Also, I'm gonna try to do this hike wearing flip-flops. I mean, I scoped out pictures of the hike online and it doesn't look like the trail itself is technically difficult. So I should be fine. These are the same brand of flip-flops that I hiked Half Dome in. If I could hike Half Dome in them, which is something like 19 miles and way more feet of elevation gain, then I'm pretty sure I can handle Angel's Landing. Let's find out. Now, if you're wondering about the name Zion for this national park, it's kind of a weird name because the entire state of Utah was originally settled by the Mormons, okay? It's a sect of Christianity, like super hardcore Christians. So they named everything that they saw after biblical things, right? And like even the Joshua tree that you see in the desert, they named it that because it looked like Joshua in the Bible to them. Well, Zion, I guess, looked like Zion, which is their word for heaven. Or actually utopia, I guess. Zion was their word for utopia. And so the first people that settled this area, the first white people, Mormon settlers, called it Zion. Well, Brigham Young, who was the head of the Mormon church, when he came out here, he was not impressed. And he said, this is not Zion. So I guess like there was some really hardcore early Mormons that were so into Brigham Young and whatever he said that they actually referred to this as not Zion for a while, <laughs> which I think is really funny for some reason. And I was gonna buy one of those National Park stickers that says Zion for my car, but I thought it'd be funnier if they make one that says not Zion, because you know what? I bet the Native Americans had a totally different name for this place before the Mormons got here. Okay, so far so good. The trail is paved. <laughs> We're pretty far down though. I mean, I'm guessing as we get higher up, it'll become a bit more challenging. Wow, look at this trail. Still paved, still pretty easy. But look, we've come up quite a ways. <laughs> That's the trail. Whew. So far it's been paved the whole way up though. It's a nice little shady stretch of the trail. Nice break from the heat. I mean, it's like April 10th today, I think. 9th, 10th, and it is in the 80s. So I can imagine how hot it gets here in like May, June, people come here in the summertime. Ooh. But it's a beautiful trail with just the right amount of shady patches for you to take a break in every so often. Wow, look how far we've come now. We are up there, but we still got a long way to go to get to the top. Look how beautiful this stone wall is. It's like a retaining wall. Somebody spent a lot of time on that. This trail is really well maintained. I guess that's where your tax dollars are going. Okay, so the light's directly behind me, but I'm, you might be able to see there's a series of pretty tight switchbacks that I have to go up next. Looks pretty hardcore. We're gonna gain a lot of elevation in a short period of time. Let's go. Look, here's what it looks like from above. <laughs> All those zigzags. I think they call them Walter's Wiggles. Not sure who Walter was. Some guy who designed the trail, I guess, or helped build it. All right, we made it to the top, and you can see in the distance there is where people are hanging onto that chain going up. And it's supposedly really steep on one side. I mean, looking at it from here, I'm a bit disappointed. Not what I would call a steep drop-off. I mean, to me, a steep drop-off is like in the Roadrunner cartoons where there's like a cliff. <laughs> but speaking of Roadrunner, <laughs> this landscape really does look like the Roadrunner cartoons. <laughs> I most expect to see like a little coyote way up there with a TNT plunger. <laughs> but look. 
Whoa, good thing there's not a cloud in the sky today. We don't have to worry about thunderstorms. And we don't have to worry about ice or snow either because it's April. But we do have to worry about the narrow route, the cliff exposures, and the strenuous climb. Strenuous, eh? We'll see about that. Here we are, the point of no return. Six people have died falling from the it's cliffs actually, on this route. Yikes. It's actually 11. It's actually 11? Mm -hmm. 11 people, this just in, have died falling from the cliffs on this route. Yikes. And I'm about to try this in flip-flops. <laughs> So far it's pretty steep, but I, know, I mean, there's this chain here that you can hang on to that's bolted in very securely, much more securely than the, the chains or the cables up on Half Dome. If you've ever done the Half Dome hike in Yosemite, they have cables there, but they're super wobbly. This thing here is not going anywhere. Okay, here's another steep section. We got to grab onto this really nice chain here. Now I took my flip-flops off for this part because there's sand on top of the sandstone and it's kind of slippery, but if you're barefoot, it's very grippy sandstone. It's another reason why this hike is much easier than Half Dome. Half Dome is granite and it's slippery. This stuff is grippy. Actually, all my years of modeling nude in the desert have really stood me in good stead for this hike because I'm used to climbing around barefoot on sandstone. Okay, this part of the trail has what I would call a steep drop-off. All right, look. Yikes! We gotta go all the way up to the top there. <laughs> okay, for this last push, I feel like I maybe should put my camera away for safety. So I might not be able to shoot myself coming up this last little bit, but right now I feel like I have pretty good footing. So check this out. We got a pretty steep drop off on both sides there <laughs> and there. There's only a chain on the one side. Okay, yikes, you guys, this really is like <laughs> hiking on the edge of a knife. Yikes! <laughs> Almost there. Almost at the top. <laughs> wow. I mean, I do not have a fear of heights, but if you do, do not try this hike. Okay, now I'm facing the final ascent straight up to the top. And supposedly it's an amazing view where you can see for miles. Okay, last part guys. And we are high up now. Look behind me. <laughs> Yikes. I just came up that. <laughs> There's a lot of people on this trail. So that's probably the hardest part in my estimation is every now and then you have to step aside for somebody else to come up. You have to let go of that chain, <laughs> which there's enough switchbacks here where you can usually find a little area to stand on, but still kind of hairy. But hiking Half Dome, those cables, there is nowhere to step aside. You have to pass each other by. <sighs> okay, I think this is the last part of the hike, so I'm gonna do this facing forward. You'll just have to trust me that I'm behind the camera. But I want you guys to be able to see it from my point of view. You know, I know a lot of my viewers can't hike, aren't able to hike physically. So this one's for you guys. <laughs> oh man, this is one of those hikes where every time I think I'm at the very last stretch, there's one more stretch. <laughs> but it looks like we're almost there. Okay, now we must be almost getting to the top. I mean, <laughs> looks like nothing but clear blue sky ahead. I can't wait to see this view. It's going to be all worth it. Oh wow, almost there. to the top. What a hike and what a view. I mean technically there's a like a little point you can go up right there but there's a ton of people up there right now. Everyone's taking their selfies and pictures though. So I'll go up there and I'll do a pano so you guys can see what my view is. Here's the view on the other side. <laughs> yeah! I don't know about you, but this looks like a great place to sit down 
and have lunch. <sighs> okay, so now that I'm all the way up here at the top of Angel's Landing in Zion, having done the trail uh, mostly in flip-flops and the last part of the way barefoot, what do I think? Would I recommend doing this? Well, if you're used to hiking in flip-flops, or you just really don't like hiking boots, it's a paved trail almost the whole way, but there is a sand on the asphalt, so it makes it a little bit slippery. So if you're gonna wear flip-flops, I would recommend wearing some that have uh, treads. The ones I'm wearing are Tevas, so they're kind of like sporty flip-flops. Honestly, you could do the whole thing barefoot pretty easy. It's a very smooth trail, pretty easy, no crazy obstacles. I mean, there's some parts we have to climb, but frankly, I felt like I had more grip with my toes during those parts. I definitely think it's way easier than the half dome hike. I mean, not just because the half dome hike is 19 miles and this was only five round trip. The stone is grippier and the chain is way more secure. I was nowhere near as sketched out. <laughs> but I shouldn't get cocky because I still have to hike back down. And downhill can sometimes be harder, right? Slipperier. Woohoo! We did it! All the way to the top of that thing and back. And it's 3.40, I left at 12.15, so it took us about three, three and a half hours. The guidebook said four hours, but I guess I'm fitter than the average person. And to be honest, I probably could have done it in, I probably could have done it in two hours, but I was with my sister and she's not as fast of a hiker as me, she has asthma. So we took our time going up and also there's a lot of people on the trail and so you can't just like be rude and blow past everybody. You know, if you're wondering how long it's gonna take you, if you're reasonably fit, you can do it within three, four hours. Not a problem. Great hike. I definitely recommend doing it if you don't have a fear of heights. If you have a fear of heights, you'll be miserable and you should just stay at the lodge and have a nice relaxing martini, which is what I'm gonna do now that I've earned my daily calories. Yum. Hmm. Here's a little postscript to the hike video I made. After we were done, we went to the gift shop and I bought this book, Death in Zion, that's basically an account of every person who has ever died at Zion Park. And there's a whole chapter devoted to the Angel's Landing hike. And I'm not sure, in the video, the sign says that six people have died since 2004. And then that woman that was there said, no, it's actually 11. I don't think she knew what she was talking about. According to this book, I don't think the sign was right either. It's, to me, reading these stories, it sounds to me like seven people have died since 04 doing that hike. Either way, people die all the time doing that hike. And I consider myself really lucky that I got off with not even a blister. 